we'll create clones of that template to be our individual pages. And um, our focus um, currently is on positioning the stuff. So last time we did a lot of things that relate to positioning, kind of, but not exactly. So today we're going to formalize and, and go over some more things that relate to positioning so that we can get a very precise way. I mean, we put margins on things so we can separate things and we can center things and all that, but now we're going to actually get on positioning stuff in specific places on the page. I'm going to go in and I'm going to do two things to our template. First thing I'm going to do is, and this is our template from before, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a container div to it. Thank you. I'm going to add a container div uh, to uh, it. And the reason I'm going to do that is, you know, that comes in handy. That comes in handy with some of the things that we might want to do style-wise. So. I kind of do it no matter what, even if I don't immediately have plans for it. So like in the first couple examples that we have, I'm not really going to do anything with this uh, container div, but, you know, it's there if we need it. And I guess I could make it anything, but I don't know, I'm going to make it a div. Why not? So I'm giving it a, a, a div tag and I'm saying the ID is container. And then I can specify my end div tag way down here. So it wraps around everything. All right. That'll be useful if I want to have sort of a background on the page that the body of the page sort of has a background on it, yet the whole content sits on top of that with maybe like a border peeking around that's in some sort of pattern. We've done examples of that before. So I'm going to put that in there for that reason. That's the one thing I'm going to do. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the code that um, addresses some of the HTML5 compatibility issues. If you recall, earlier versions of Firefox and Internet Explorer don't necessarily support HTML5. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in code that kind of fixes that. Doesn't completely fix that, but it kind of does. That code like this. That code looks like this. I have a Firefox style sheet that simply tells the Firefox browser and other Mozilla-based browsers to treat the HTML5 new tags as block tags. I then have this little fix. It's called the HTML5 shiv, which helps for earlier versions of Internet Explorer. I'm also going to start with a clean style sheet. So we went over the examples from last time. We're going to go and start anew with a clean style sheet. Now, there's a few different ways that you can do style on a page. One of the ways is what's called fixed positioning. And fixed positioning isn't necessarily the best strategy you can take. But it's a simple one, so we're going to learn it first to kind of get ourselves used to it. Fixed positioning was probably a lot more popular back in the, the good old days 
when we were relatively uh, certain that people browsing our web pages are going to be using a computer, right? And a computer screen is a certain size. And there is, to be sure, there's a difference between a big screen and a small screen, but there's not quite the dramatic difference like there is now, where you have people that could be browsing the web on a giant monitor, or they could be using a small telephone, all right? So because of that, fixed position is sort of like the name implies. Everything is sort of glued into place, all right? And we set certain parameters sort of pixel by pixel, and we define how big it is. It's like in the old days when I did the school newspaper. We would have a blank sheet of paper and would cut out articles and would glue them down in certain positions. And that's where they stayed, all right? They were a certain height, a certain width, and we put them in a certain position. So, with fixed positioning, there's three things that we have to, have to specify. You can do this a few different ways, but the way I typically do it is with three different things. I can identify, <coughs> first of all, I identify that the position is absolute, all right? fixed. So I put in my style rule, position absolute. Second thing I can do is I can put a top position. And I can put a left position. And that effectively will position it 10 pixels from the top, 200 pixels from the left. So whatever this container was, whatever this block was, we'll plop it right there on the page. So let's go and let's try to make our design. And remember, our design is this. Our wireframe that we drew a few classes back is like this, where we have the header, the content area, the nav, and the footer. Let's try doing that using this strategy of, of fixed positioning. So, my header I'm going to, and I'm going to give these again, I'm going to do the bits of, of the different uh, variations of gray. So I'm going to say background, pound sign, or background, pound sign, position, absolute, ah. 10 pixels left. I always appreciate that because I think some classes kind of notice when I make those mistakes and just like sit back and laugh and say, let's, let's watch me struggle over this one. So I do appreciate when, when people point out that I make, uh, that I make oversights like that. Um, my article, I'm going to make uh, the background of it. I cannot type today. Pound sign. I want it left to 10. On the top, I'm going to make 100 pixels. So it'll be 100 pixels down from the top. Hundred pixels down from the top. And I'm going to give it a width of 
500 pixels. But now, we give a background of this too. 100 from the top, and we'll do 650 pixels from the left. All right, this is going to be, well, I'll no, we'll make it 550 pixels. And we'll give it a width of 200 pixels. I'm just guessing at these numbers, by the way. Uh, I mean, they're educated guesses. And in other words, I took, if it's 500 wide and it starts at 10, position 10, I know it has to be at least 510 over, otherwise it will overlap, so I'll make it 550. So I'm just guessing at these, these things. And then finally, the footer, I'll give a background of this. Um, by a top of 400, left of 100, width of 700 pixels. All right. Now let's save that and let's view our page. Not horrible. Actually, that is kind of horrible. I'm doing a few things wrong, obviously. Uh, uh, I see what I did wrong. It's a section, not an article. I could have gotten around that by putting an ID in, and it wouldn't have mattered what it is, but there we go. Okay, that's a little closer to what I want. Still not too good. All right, let's see. Top 100, left 10. We'll make the top for this guy 200. We'll make the width of this guy 700. Alright, not bad. Let's put the section down a little bit more still. The nav a little bit down more still. And the footer a little bit more down still. Alright, pretty close. You could maybe just push these down another bit. All right. And we pretty much have the layout that we said we wanted. All right. Again, we could fiddle with the numbers to get it a little more precise and all that. But that's pretty much what we want. Now, this is a, with, with everything absolute, sometimes this is called jokingly, or, or not jokingly really, but, but um, in slang terms, it's called like a, a frozen layout or an ice layout, which means that if I go and I make this bigger or smaller, nothing changes. That layout changes. Why? Because I've nailed everything down at certain positions. Pardon me? But, yeah, because the position's absolute, so everything is nailed down at that spot, which is not necessarily the best way to do it, especially given the, 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 the advent of and the popularity of smartphones and having browsers. Again, this would have to look at it on different smartphones. In fact, do I have our friend the mobile emulator here? Actually, let me try to download it real quick.
mobile emulator is a way for t uh, to test what your site's going to look like on a mobile phone without actually having a mobile phone. And it actually does better than that because you can test on a variety of different mobile phones. Um, and again, it's not as good as actually having the phone and testing it, obviously. But at the very least, it, it gives you some idea of what it's going to look like. So I can emulate a HTC Hero. And I can go and I can drag my web page right onto the emulator. It'll show me what it looks. Yeah, well, it doesn't really look that good on that kind of device. You imagine that being phone size. Now, there is one line of code that I could put in that we haven't talked about mobile yet, but um, there's a line I could put in to make it look a little bit better. That's this line, this meta line with the viewport. And we'll talk about this in a later class, but I'll put that in now. All right. It looks better in one respect. It doesn't look better in another respect, right? It looks better in the sense that we can read it now, but it doesn't look too good because, like, it's gigantic, and it would be very difficult to, you know, if you can imagine, would have to scroll a long way, and you even get some overlap there of the stuff. So, fixed is a nice place to start, um, and, like, if you're mocking up a prototype, it might be good to do it fixed because that's simple and you can go and change it easily if, if it proves to be wrong. But it's probably not the best solution for this. Now, again, keep in mind that what we're going to do over the course of this example is we're going to write, we're not going to touch the HTML. We're going to write different style sheets to get our ex identical uh, HTML look radically different. All right? And not just in terms of colors, but in terms of layout and so on and so forth. All right? So that's one thing that we could do as far as layout goes. All right? Is we could um, use the fixed positioning, all right, where we effectively nail everything down in place. All right? Has the advantage that it's simple has a disadvantage that's not very flexible, all right? And, and, and we probably, for that reason, we don't want to do it. Now, I put in a container div. So my next example, what I'm going to do is call this guy fit. Or absolute is probably a better way to put it. Copy this. I'm going to call this a relative layout. When we talk about things being relative, we're talking about like the position or in this case, we mean a position, but it could mean other things, is in relation to something else. So we've been doing relative layouts all the time, right? Because each block was in relation to all the other blocks on the page. So what I can do here is I'm going to go in and do this to this version of it. I'm going to go in, I'm going to remove file rules for all these, start fresh. I'm going to give a style for the container. And I'm going to set the margin to 0px auto.
I'm going to set the body of the page to some color. What color would that be? Three three zero 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 zero. It'd be a darker red, right? Because RGB, the first two relates to the red, the second two relates to green, the third relates to blue. There's no green or blue, so it is red. But because the three three, that, that's a lower number, it's going to be a darker shade. Um, so I'm going to give this guy a width of 600 pixels. Then I'm going to say nav li play inline. What does that do? What's that going to do to my page? Yeah, it's going to make my links, my, my list elements, which are my links, appear oriented horizontally. Because by default, an li tag is a block tag, which means they stack on top of each other like blocks do. By saying it's inline, it's going to stay, keep them all on the same line, so I'm going to have horizontal. So what I'm going to have when I'm done, let me show you what my aim is. My aim is to have my page look like this. Have the header. This is the browser window, and this area is going to be that dark red. Got my header, got my content, got my nav, and got my footer. All right, so that's my aim for this. All right. If I look at this, oh, what did I do wrong? Really dark red, yeah. And what I did wrong is I should give the container a background color too, because I can't read the font on that. I just want the background color to be a, a little border around it. So I'll go in and make it a background of white. And there we go. All right. Well, that's not bad. How could we improve the appearance of this? Yeah, giving some spaces between the links would be one. Having the text not appear right flush up against it, that would be another. So, um, so let's go in and... I can say header padding npx section padding x All right, that looks better. I uh, probably want to do the footer in there too for good measure. All right, and I probably want to space out these links a little bit. So I can say nav li margin Yes. Remember what's margin? A margin is the space between stuff. So I'm going to say I want 10 pixels between stuff. And that spreads them out. All right. So this cer certainly won't win any design war uh, awards, but it's not a bad layout. All right. Now notice a couple things. This is one thing. One, once we introduce CSS, one trap that some students fall into especially good students, by the way, all right, 
So good students, what they do is they look and they try to micromanage every aspect of the page. They try to put in control for everything. Notice how little CSS code I had to get this look. All right? I don't specify a width for anything, right? Why? Well, because I'm going to let the browser's behavior handle that. What is the browser's default behavior? The browser's default behavior is for a block tag, it takes up 100% of the width, and it makes it as tall as it needs to be. So, in other words, this header, I don't specify a width for, but I specified a width for 600 pixels for the container. So the container is going to be 600 pixels. The, the, the header is going to be contained entirely within that. All right? So it's not going to go all the way. It's not going to go past it or anything like that. All right? So the lesson here is not to micromanage. Not to micromanage. All right? And just let the browser do its own thing. And many times you'll be in good shape. Now, this is sometimes jokingly called a jello layout because it wiggles a little bit, but it's not totally frozen like the first layout that we looked at, but it's not completely flexible either. So if I resize this guy, if I resize this guy, the page moves a little bit. Yet, that 600 pixel width stays constant. 600 plus the padding, so it's actually probably like 620. And then beyond a certain point, it doesn't move anymore. Well, let's see if the mobile emulator likes this page any better. Well, we got rid of the problem of it overlapping. If you remember, we had the problem on the other one of it overlapping, and that was a big deal. So we got rid of that. But we still kind of have this problem of we have to scroll horizontally to read stuff, namely the link. We can maybe help a little bit by using not a absolute width, but using a percentage-based width. So I could say instead, with instead of 600 pixels, I could say maybe 60%. It will be about 600 pixels when the screen is fully um, expanded, because this, I think, monitor is... Um, about a thousand pixels, thousand and change wide. So if I look at this guy now, as it gets bigger, the content area gets bigger. As this gets smaller, Content area gets smaller. Finally, at a certain point, it cuts off because, you know, it has to be a certain size. And I can take care of that by putting in a minimum width. So I could say min width maybe 100 pixels. Let's make the width 80% and give it a minimum width of 200 pixels. So 
now, as the window gets smaller, content area gets smaller, and the links line themselves up a little bit differently, but they're at the bottom. And at a certain point, notice it doesn't get any smaller because we've defined a minimum width. Right? If we look at this on a mobile device, starting to get closer to something that is, looks reasonable on a mobile device. We still have some, go ahead. Yes, I have to launch a new one. So in the emulator, I'd say, how do I do that? Landscape. So it launches a new emulator, and then I can drag that guy onto this. Again, we have a complete class on mobile web development, which I would encourage all of you folks to take. All right? Um, but this class, how do I want to say it? I teach this class differently since the advent of mobile phones because we want to sort of avoid getting into bad habits, and we at least want to be moving in the right direction of, of making our, our pages sort of work under uh, mobile. So this is the case, again, if we have a sort of a nice layout here. Um, that at least isn't horrible uh, in a mobile environment. All right. We could do some other things with relative position. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to create another folder called relative to. say I want sort of the best of both worlds. That is, I want the, 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 the container to be centered within the body of the page, yet I still want this basic layout. How can I do that? Well, we can, and we do it this way. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to make this back to 600 pixels. I'm going to make the section have a width of 350 pixels. I'm going to get rid of the display in line because now I want the links to be stacked vertically. And we're going to be almost there, but not quite when I do this. Because we've got the links here and we want them up here. Okay. Other than that, we're in good shape just want to move this stuff up to here. All right. Well, how do we do that? All right. We can't give an absolute position. We cannot give an absolute position. Why can't we give an absolute position? I'll give you a hint. Because we want to put it there, unless the screen's like that. Then we want to put it there. Unless the screen's like this, then we want to put it there. So the top and the left, especially the left position, actually changes based on how wide the screen is. 
So if I like were to take a guess, let's say, and then let's do this to show you what I mean. If I were to go in and put the navigation and say, nav, stop 200 pixels, left. 600 pixels. This is wrong, by the way, because it's absolute. If I were to do that, hey, I got it to work. Well, except if I go and do that. It, it is. The, the con not the whole body, but the container is 600 pixels. So in other words, this is 600, and from there to there is 600. So if I go and do that, they're both roughly 600. The point is, is I can't use absolute positioning here because the way this page is created, this is a jello layout, right? The page wiggles a little bit as I move. All right, and that, that border sort of around things changes as I move it. From the left. Yeah. Right, the container is centered. So in other words, if we're gonna draw this, The screen is as wide as the screen is, so maybe the screen is 800 pixels, all right? The lift is 600 pixels from the left. Container is 600 pixels wide, all right? So the container stays 600 pixels wide, this stays 600 pixels from the left. So in other words, this equals the degree that they overlap, all right? And in other words, another way to show it is if I move this all the way over here to where there's no border, that lines up pretty much except for the padding with that. So that's 600 and it's 600 from the left. All right, so absolute positioning isn't a way to go on this one obviously, because that's going to nail it down at a place, and we don't want it nailed down in the place. Not really. What we want to do is this. We want to move it up over to the left, and up a certain amount. So here's where it's supposed to be, right? The browser puts it where it wants to put it, according to the rules of the browser. And this particular lift, the browser wants to put the lift right here. We don't want it there. We want it to the left, uh, maybe 350 pixels, to the left of where it should be, of where the browser's natural place for it is. And then we want it up, maybe also 300 pixels, all right, or 350 pixels. We want to do that in relation to where the browser normally wants to put it. So again, in relation is not an absolute position then, but it's a, what's called a relative position. So I can say the nav Instead of position absolute, I can say position relative. And I want it to be 350 pixels over to the left of where it should be, of where it naturally wants to be put. I want the left 
to be 350 over from where it should be. In other words, the left right now is here. I want to push it 350 pixels more from the left. In other words, I want it to end up here. So the difference, the difference from where it ends up to where it should be will be 300 pixels or 350 pixels. And then I want to do the top. The difference is I want to put it up, not down. So I actually use a negative amount. Uh, negative 300 pixels. If I do this, and as this gets bigger and smaller, everything moves. And this thing moves in relation to where it should be. Because I want to go up instead of down. Normally when you put a top on it, you're going down from the top. If you want to go up towards the top, you put a negative a number in it. Just like the left is, yeah, exactly. Well, um, yeah, yeah, you probably could do something like that. Bottom, 300 pixels. I usually don't mess with the, I usually do top and left. That's easier for me to visualize. That didn't work. Yeah, you could get it to work that way. Um, there's, there's, again, w with any of these, um, with any of these, uh, um, things, you know, there's slight variations that you could do and, and end up doing stuff a little bit differently. I, you know, I typically do the way that makes sense for me. Uh, but yeah, you know, if you experiment, you find another way, that, that, that's fine. The question was, um, could I have done the bottom instead of the top? And I did. If I did the bottom of 300, the same thing as top of negative 300. Exactly. In other words, what varies in uh, a browser window, the, the, the top left corner is a constant. What varies in a browser window is how far to the right it extends and how far down it extends. So that's probably a, that's probably a better way to explain why I do it that way. It's, it's easier for me to visualize that way. All right. What do you mean? Okay, that's that's a that's a good question. Um, is there a way to change it to accommodate other cultures? For example, I might want to have a layout of a page different uh, in Arabic or in Hebrew because the the writing goes in the other direction. Well, that's a more complex. Um, that there, what what you could, well, again, it is probably dealt with in a variety of different ways. Um, what you can do is you can either ask the person that's visiting what, you know, what what language you want to see. Do you want to see the English or do you want to see the Arabic? That's one way. Um, and then have possibly different sites for that. You could accomplish some things through um, IP detection and, and possibly alternate style sheet or possibly code on the server side that would handle that. There's no real straightforward answer to do that just with HTML and CSS. It'd be a combination of HTML, CSS, and some other stuff, probably server side scripting uh, to tell that. Um, Actually, that's one nice thing in the Android development class that, that, that we teach here. If you're doing development not for a mobile website, but if you're doing a native Android application, 
um, you actually have string files. You have control files for all the labels on your screen. Um, so in other words, if I had a form to fill in, and in English it was name, address, phone number, um, you would then have a French file that had the French translation for name, address, phone number. And then you could have an Arabic in, in whatever language. And you could also say, if this phone is, if this phone is set to Hebrew, use this layout instead of the, 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 the standard layout for it. So um, the Android platform is very powerful as far as that goes. Um, there's nothing intrinsic in the web development platform that would allow you to do it quite as slickly. You would kind of have to devise your own solution, use a content management system perhaps. Some of those have um, localization features. Um, it would be a more involved solution for that. That's a great question though. Um, you know, people forget sometimes it's the World Wide Web, you know, uh, and as such, um, you know, uh, you have to, you know, you, you, if, you're, if your business is serious about doing business around the world or your organization wants exposure around the world, you, you should take these things into account. Um, it's funny, I think, uh, if you remember when I was talking about visual language, I pulled up a page in Icelandic. It was hard for me to get a page in Icelandic because it was kept redirecting me to the English version of it. All right, because it, it looked and saw, hey, this person's in the United States. They probably want to read English. So it actually was a little bit of a trick for me to go and find a page that, that wasn't already translated for me. So, but yeah, that, that gets into the area of, of server-side code. All right, so we have two fixed, or I'm sorry, we have one fixed layout we have two relative layouts. Um, there is one more style, and it's probably the hardest style uh, uh, way of accomplishing style that, uh, of all of them, and that's called floating or liquid layouts, sometimes called responsive layouts. Responsive actually encompasses a little bit more than just the, uh, the, the floating layout, but responsive layouts are, are sort of... Uh, um, uh, another sort of buzzword. And we'll encounter that next time. Now, a critical thing and a thing to keep in mind is that here are three pages with identical HTML that look different. And if I was trying harder, I could make them even more different, all right, by, by playing with the color scheme more or changing the fonts or, um, you know, uh, adding background images or any number of things. So we've done a good job with our HTML if we can take that HTML and format it in wildly different ways without touching the HTML, which is what we've done. So next week we'll cover the last sort of of these uh, models, uh, the floating version, and we'll do things such as the very annoying, how do I make this actually up against that instead of having it underneath that. So we'll address issues like that. Yes. All right. We'll see you in lab.